Hello viewers, I am Dr. Rubiu. I am an assistant professor of pathology in a medical college hospital and I am making this video for my students and also for you. Today's topic is on red blood cell morphology. In this lecture, we will talk about some introductory points regarding red blood cells and then talk about the various morphological features that we encounter during examination of peripheral blood film. Now always remember mature red blood cells are non-nucleated that means they do not contain nucleus and also they lack the usual organelles for example they lack lysosomes endoplasmic reticulums mitochondria etc and the shape of the mature red blood cell as you can see is biconcave disc shape the average diameter is 7.2 micrometer and if we talk about range it is between 7 and 8 micrometer since this is a biconcave disc shaped structure so the thickness varies it is the least in the center and that is 1 micrometer and at the periphery the thickness of a typical red blood cell is around 2.4 micrometer always remember the biconcave shape gives them flexibility and this shape makes them flexible to pass through the narrow capillaries and the diameters of those narrow capillaries are in fact less than the diameter of an average red blood cell but since the red blood cells are flexible due to their biconcave shape so they can squeeze and pass through those narrow capillaries the average lifespan of red blood cells is around 120 days plus minus 30 days so now that we have talked about some introductory points regarding red blood cells now let's move on and talk about the various types of morphology of red blood cells that we can encounter during examination of peripheral blood smear so the first term that we can encounter is the normal term and that is normocytic normochromic what do we mean by normocytic or normocytic it means here the red blood cells will be of normal size and what do we mean by normochromic it means in this case the red blood cells will also have normal color and always remember when we are talking about normochromic red blood cells we have to think that one third of the diameter of the red blood cell in the center is pale and two third is red so whenever we are talking about normochromic red blood cells we are saying that the central one-third of that particular red blood cell is pale and the peripheral two-third is red in color and that is the normal color of red blood cell so whenever we're talking about our normal red blood cell morphology we will often use this term normocytic normochromic that means the red cells are of normal size and of normal color that is indicating normal hemoglobin content now another term that we will often use during examination of peripheral blood smear is anisocytosis whenever there is significant variation in the size of red blood cells we will use this term so anisocytosis means significant variation in the size of cells another term that we may use is poikilocytosis it means significant variation in the shape of the red blood cell sometimes the red blood cells may have both variation in size as well as variation in shape of the red blood cell and in those cases we can combine these two terms so we can say anisopoikilocytosis now always remember these terms are non-specific often we will see this type of terms in a variety of anemia so we will talk about them in detail in our subsequent lecture when we talk about particular types of anemia now let's talk about the other red blood cell morphology that we can encounter one common term is known as microcytic hypochromic so as the name implies microcytic or microcytic this is indicating that the red blood cells will be smaller than their normal size and hypochromic this means that the color will also not be normal recall that the normochromic red blood cell had one-third central paler and two-third peripheral two-third was red in color but whenever we are saying hypochromic the central paler will increase 
and this is happening due to deficiency of hemoglobin in the cytoplasm of those red blood cells. So this is a very common term often we will use this term microcytic hyperchromic and the examiners whenever you mention this term may ask you what are the anemias where we can have microcytic hyperchromic red blood cells. Always remember you have to say at least four names. They are iron deficiency anemia, thalassemia, sideroblastic anemia and anemia of chronic disease. In all these four types of anemia the red blood cells will appear smaller in size and also there will be increased area of the central failure so they will show microcytic hypochromic morphology. So you may be wondering the red blood cells can become smaller. Can they become larger? Yes and that term is known as macrocytic. Here the red blood cells are larger than their normal size and they may be round or oval. Now regarding other particular morphologies sometimes we can have red cells in the shape of sickle and that is particularly seen in sickle cell anemia. So sickle cells these are elongated cells, narrow cells and one or both ends will be curved and pointed. In many textbooks you may also hear the term inverted boat shape. So that type of cell as you can see is known as sickle cell shape. Another morphology that we can see is called spherocytes. Recall that normal red blood cells are biconcave circular disc shape. So the central area has the least diameter and the central area normally contains the least amounts of hemoglobin. So when we are looking at a normal red blood cell in the peripheral smear we see one third central paler and peripheral two thirds is red. But in spherocytes the central paler will be absent. So the entire cell will appear red in color like a circle or spherical in shape if we think of that three dimensionally. Now another morphology that we can have is called target cell. Here the red blood cells will accumulate hemoglobin in the center as well as in the periphery and there will be clear intervening area between the center and the periphery and this will give the appearance of a bullseye or a target. So these type of cells are known as target cells. Another morphology that we can have is known as schistocytes and these are in fact irregularly fragmented cells and sometimes they may appear as triangular or in some textbooks they're also referred to as helmet shaped cells. So always remember schistocytes these are fragmented red blood cells and they may indicate hemolytic anemia as we will see in our later videos. Now another term that we may often hear is called polychromatic red blood cells. These cells are slightly larger than the typical red blood cells and they will have a faint blue-gray tint in the cytoplasm and this is due to presence of ribosomal RNA in the cytoplasm of these polychromatic red blood cells. Always remember polychromatia means multiple color so these type of red blood cells will not only have the reddish cytoplasm but also there will be faint blue-gray tint in their cytoplasm. Another term that we may encounter is called basophilic stippling and as the name implies whenever we hear basophilic we should think that something bluish has happened and here purple bluish granules that are representing ribosomal aggregates are seen in the cytoplasm of red blood cells. So always remember in basophilic stippling the red blood cells will contain purple blue granules. These granules may be fine or coarse. For example, in megaloblastic anemia, the basophilic stippling or the purple blue granules are fine in nature, whereas in lead poisoning, there we can also see basophilic stippling and there the purple blue granules are coarse in shape. Another term that we may hear is called Howell Jolly bodies and here the red blood cells will contain round purple nuclear remnants in their cytoplasm. Another morphological term that we may encounter is called dimorphic red blood cells and as the name implies here 
there will be presence of two different populations of red blood cells. For example, suppose a patient had severe iron deficiency anemia, so his blood picture is microcytic hypochromic. Now that person is transfused with blood and the transfused blood is normocytic normochromic, so after transfusion the patient will have two population of red blood cells. His original red blood cells are microcytic hypochromic and the blood that was transfused that is normocytic normochromic. So this is an example of dimorphic red blood cell. So the last slide is the summary of the various morphological types of red blood cells that we can encounter and I have also written the common causes. Now you don't have to memorize this now. Once we go through all these topics you will understand them easily. So this concludes today's lecture on red blood cell morphology. I hope this video was helpful and in our next lecture we will also talk further about the various types of anemia. So until next time, take care and stay blessed. Thank you.